Didn't think I'd forget summer, did you? I'm so bad with getting stuff during the holidays when Christmas came up. I was like, oh yeah, I was supposed to uh, do some sort of video on that, but uh, hey. It is summer and there are exclusive things catering to summer that I kind of want to talk about that is gonna help you beauty-wise and fashion-wise. And firstly, we're gonna be talking about sunscreens specifically for your face. I'm going to tell you what sunscreens really do and exactly how to put it on dealing with makeup as well. We're talking exclusively about sunscreen for your face today as it will heavily impact your beauty routine in the summer and how you put on your makeup. Your face is the part of your body that is most exposed to the sun. You can't put a shirt over it. You can't wear long jeans over them. So possibly this is a little more important than you think. So welcome back to the channel. This is Demetria Sparrow, aiding you to the journey in freedom and femininity. Follow my Instagram and Facebook for the latest updates and content. And if you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Disclaimers for the video coming up. I am still dealing with gum surgery, so I have to wear a night guard. That's why I have a lisp. But firstly, we need to talk about exactly what sunscreen is. Sunscreen is a product meant to absorb or reflect the ultraviolet as in UV rays that cause sunburn. Usually comes in a lotion, spray, stick, gel, or some sort of cream. Concerning skincare, while well, the deal is, it is the most important part of every skincare routine, particularly in sunny weather and in sunny areas. 90% of premature aging comes from from sun exposure. Sun exposure can also lead to other skin issues like breakouts, acne scarring, or dark spots. Exposure to UV rays damages your skin. So if you're dealing with any skin issues, it's only going to further worsen those issues when you're exposing yourself to the sun. Treatments you undergo to help with skin issues and other skincare products like moisturizers, serums, or exfoliators, all of those things will not really matter once the sun gets to them. Next thing we're gonna talk about is sort of reading the labels on sunscreen. So what this is telling me, this is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios Anti-Brilliance. SPF 60. So it's telling me the SPF number. It's saying broad spectrum and saying UVB plus UVA. So what do all these mean? SPF for one thing stands for sun protection factor. It is a measure of how well sunscreen protects against UVB rays. It's not measuring the amount of time you can stay in the sun without dealing with sunburn. So if it's an SPF 30, that means it's going to protect against 30 times more exposure to the sun than if you didn't wear sunscreen. That basically adds up to SPF 30 having a 97% protection. So SPF 15 is about 93% protection. SPF 50 blocks 98%. SPF 100 blocks 99%. This is sort of where you hear the idea that anything above SPF 30 is not that much bigger a deal. You're dealing with a 1% increase in protection at that point. So for one thing, when we're talking about UVB and UVA, those are both UV rays, but they affect your skin a little different. When the standard for SPF was originally being made, there was only the conception that there were UVB rays. And so SPF usually tends to ignore UVA. So when you pick out a sunscreen, you want to be looking for what's called broad spectrum. So that's gonna protect you against UVB and UVA. UVA is what causes premature aging. This is what tends to give you wrinkles and age spots. UVA leads to tanning, which is what happens when your body makes enough compounds to stop from damaging too many skin cells. UVB is the one that causes a lot of sunburn. But keep in mind, exposure to both of these rays can lead to skin cancer. The types of facial sunscreens, it seems like there's two main ones. So the first one you wanna look out for is what's called a mineral sunscreen. It's sometimes also called a physical sunscreen. It consists of two main ingredients being zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. These tend to be especially good for sensitive skin types. These work by sitting on top of the skin to reflect UV rays. Zinc oxide protects you from all kinds of sun damage without causing a reaction to your skin. This is good because a lot of sunscreens are notorious for making people break out. So if it's not zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, 
side, what you're probably dealing with is the other type of sunscreen, which is chemical sunscreens. This is classified by having the ingredients octanoxate, avobenzone, oxybenzone, and homosalate. Rather than sitting on top of the skin, these tend to absorb into the skin. So chemical sunscreens are often disputed within the skincare community and in the industry. It's speculated whether it can cause more sensitivity to your skin. It's speculated on its actual effectiveness in protecting you from UV rays. And furthermore, it is heavily disputed whether it can have devastating environmental effects. So the coral reefs we all know are suffering horribly and sunscreen has a lot to do with it. 14,000 tons of sunscreen are put into our oceans every year. Places like Hawaii and Palau have introduced bans on sunscreens that have harmful ingredients. So why does this happen? You're putting on your sunscreen before you jump into the ocean on the beach when your sunscreen comes off of you. All of those chemicals are just leaking into the water and the corals start to absorb those ingredients. It's chemicals like oxybenzone that can have devastating effects on the coral reefs. These substances contain nanoparticles that disrupt the reproductive and growth cycles of corals. And this inevitably leads to them bleaching and dying. Non-nano and zinc oxide sunscreens are regarded to have a far better environmental effect rather than chemical sunscreens. I think we all have our own job to do in protecting the environment and sort of looking after our carbon footprint. Picking out an environmentally safe sunscreen can mean wonders in the long run. Sunscreen is ultimately the last thing you put on in your skincare routine. Once you put on your moisturizer or serum or what have you, you want to put on your sunscreen, take a teaspoon amount and massage it all close in the nooks and crannies. Make sure you're obviously reaching everywhere on your face. Make sure you get your neck zone. If I was to put it on right now, I would go down to here, I might as well. I would get the back of my neck and I would definitely not forget the ears. And two things, for one thing, you probably wanna put on a second coat. And secondly, you probably want to reapply every two hours. Most people, when they put on sunscreen, they're only putting on about a third of what they need. And it's probably true that you're not reapplying often enough. Think about what happens in sunny weather. You are sweating a lot and you're possibly swimming. So sweat and water will quickly run off that sunscreen. The truth is now that we know how sort of SPF kind of works. It's not so much the number of SPF, but in how you're using your sunscreen. You want to reapply often and you want to apply a liberal amount. In SPF 15, that is applied every two hours and is done in two coats, is far more effective than an SPF 50 that is applied every four hours and you're only putting one coat, like a very thin coat on. When you're picking out a sunscreen, I'm gonna have a ton of products down below that are gonna fit your skin type and sort of what you want. Firstly, you want to know your skin type. You're gonna be picking a product based on if you have dry skin, if you have sensitive skin, if you're very oily. So dry skin needs hydrating ingredients like ceramides or something like hyaluronic acid. For dry skin, it's often recommended to get an alternative, sort of like a BB cream or a tinted moisturizer that actually has an SPF in it. Oily skin basically needs a matte finish. You want something that can help with oil control. And with stuff like the La Roche-Posay and Thalios, it's amazing how much your perspective can sort of change. You're like, oh God, I gotta put sunscreen all over my face. I'm gonna start greasing up. When you get something that sort of manages that oil and kind of mattifies your face, it's really amazing. What's also great for oily or acne prone skin is a powder sunscreen, just like how powder foundations are good for managing oil. Like I said, mineral sunscreens tend to work with skin that is very sensitive, like ya girl. Also, you want to pick a sunscreen that doesn't have white cast, basically. It's amazing, the first sunscreen that I bought for my face was one by Avene, I believe. The white cast was unbelievable. It sucked out any color in my face. And when I put it on, it, it couldn't blend at all. It was sort of like once I put it on an area, you couldn't move it around. It was really, really gross 
thick and horrible. Don't try that at all. It, it's this one. Don't go with that one. So this one actually does not have any white cast whatsoever. You put it on your hand and you're like, where did it go? So you want to get something that is like that, and especially if you are a darker skin tone, because the darker your skin tone, the more sort of vulnerable you are to white cast. The moment you've all been waiting for, what do I do with sunscreen? if I'm gonna be putting on a full face of makeup. So a few things. For one thing, there are makeup products that have SPF in them. Foundation tends to have something like an SPF 15. A lot of them do. And concealers, they tend to be a little heavier, so they tend to have what is an SPF 30. But the truth is, that doesn't really mean a lot. It doesn't really add up in the long run. SPF in makeup is notoriously ineffective. With something like concealer, oh, it has an SPF 30, that's amazing. When you're using concealer to patch up imperfections, you're using it to highlight, like if you're doing your forehead and your cheeks, those are the only areas that are going to withstand the sun. So there was one time last year where I was putting on concealer just like I did now, and then when I took my makeup off, the whole rim of my forehead was sunburned. So you want to think of SPF in your makeup as sort of a little side kick to the real sunscreen. When putting on makeup on top of sunscreen, it's better to go with a mineral sunscreen. It's less prone to cause sensitivity and you don't want to cause any issues when you have a makeup over anything. It's the last part of your skincare routine. Once you put on sunscreen, just put on makeup over it. Crazy, right? Again, now that we know that there are sunscreens on the market that are a lot more lightweight and can cause a lot less sort of greasiness and buildup, it's far more possible and sort of more feasible to know that you can just put on makeup and not run into a whole ton of issues. What tends to work with people is when they put on sunscreen, it can sort of act like a primer. It's best to replace it because think about it, your routine could be a serum first, then a moisturizer, then primer, then sunscreen, then foundation, then concealer. You want to minimize the amount of layers. You can use this as sort of its own kind of primer. Now, when we're talking about having to reapply your sunscreen every two hours for it to maximize itself throughout the day, how do you do that over a full face of makeup when your first coat was under the makeup? The truth is you really can't. The ideal thing would be to, after two hours, Take off all your makeup, put your sunscreen on, and then do your makeup all over again. But the truth is, no one's gonna do that. What could be an alternative for this issue is a powdered sunscreen. So these are mineral powder sunscreens that you could put on top of your makeup when you are fully done. Instead of using it as an alternative to a primer, it is now an alternative to setting powder. You could try Paula's Choice On The Go Shielding Powder or the Tarte Guard Mineral Sunscreen Powder. These tend to be excellent alternatives when managing for makeup as well as oil control. The only thing I would preface this with is we sort of know that if you put on too much powder, you could start caking yourself up. So if you have to reapply this every two hours, think about what it could end up looking like at the end of the day when you've done possibly three or four touch-ups. So I'm going to list a bunch of sunscreen products for you. All of them are a little bit different and will aid you in certain needs. First is the REN clean screen, or is it REN? First of all, all these are broad spectrum. This one is broad spectrum. It is a zinc oxide only mineral sunscreen. It gives off very little white cast and manages oil and provides a mattifying effect. Next is the CeraVe mineral sunscreen. This one tends to be a little bit more on the economical side, like CeraVe is. This is lightweight, with titanium dioxide. And to the relief of the coral reefs, it is oxybenzone friendly. The Tarte Guard powder, as I said, is very, very helpful. You can reapply this several times throughout the day without getting all greased up, and you can basically put it over makeup. Next is the one I have, the La Roche-Passe and Thelios Anti-Brilliance. This is an SPF of 60. I've been loving this. This has helped me so much and is a relief that there is zero white cast. And you'll find with uh, sunscreens like this, they don't have that kind of gross kind of chemical sunscreen smell. Smells nice. This is also water resistant 
for up to 80 minutes. The Skin Cuticles Physical Fusion UV Defense. This is actually a tinted sunscreen. It adheres to sensitive skin as well as mature skin. It's non comedogenic, there's no fragrance, and it is free of dyes. Supergoop Unseen SPF 40 is excellent for darker skin tones. Very, very sheer, and it dries down matte. The Black Girl Sunscreen SPF 30 is actually formulated by women of color. It is sweat resistant and provides an invisible finish. The Cetaphil Pro Oil Control Moisturizing Lotion. As it is in the name, it is meant for oily skin types. It is lightweight and non-comedogenic. And lastly, the Super Gloop Glow Stick, a formula that adheres to more dry skin types. It comes in a stick. It's a little bit of a heavier formula to help with drier skin. Pretty much it leaves you with a very very nice, hydrated, dewy sort of finish that I think you're gonna really, really love. I hope you are ready for summer and you have the tools necessary to pick out the right sunscreen for you. I am ready for summer. So if you have any concerns or questions, please comment down below. I am not a big YouTuber, so I will surely answer all of your questions. Stay beautiful, everyone. Take care.